In honor of Sam Weir's birthday, August 12th, 1898, this week we've added a special Weir Wednesday presentation featuring portraits of Weir from the Riverbrink collection, focusing on this one by artist Fred Barley. The charcoal on paper sketch was commissioned by Weir, who sat for the portrait in 1951 at the age of 53. The drawing by Varley is one of seven portraits of Sam Weir in the Riverbrink collection, which includes two oils and five drawings. This is one of the portraits in oil by British Canadian artist Archibald Barnes, which dates to 1955. The date has often puzzled me because Weir appears to be much younger than in the Varley portrait from four years earlier. One possibility is that it was painted from an earlier photograph. But Weir's correspondence with the artist includes a detailed description of how arduous sitting for the portrait was due to the summer heat. His youthful appearance in this portrait may explain in part why Weir was not thrilled with the Varley portrait, which he described in a letter as, quote, not a good likeness, but it may be a good drawing, end quote. The collection also includes this sketch, a preparatory drawing for the three quarter length portrait, the formal portrait of Weir by Ken Forbes, which hangs in the library at Riverbrink. Sam's interest in having his portrait painted was due in part to his professional stature as a prominent lawyer and businessman who was also elected to the London City Council and served on various public boards. The Barnes portrait was intended for his new offices in London and in 1974, Weir offered a larger portrait by the artist, present location unknown, to hang in the new courthouse in London, arguing that it was an appropriate request because he had made important contributions to the law and to jurisprudence in the local community. This portrait by Varley is a less formal rendering. In the charcoal drawing, we get a clear sense of the sitter's personality, his humanity. We are as dressed in a suit and tie, but the effect is still casual. This is a man who is perhaps most comfortable in a suit. His lips are slightly parted as if he is caught in mid conversation and the face is animated by the dark charcoal of the eyes and the eyebrows. The effect is to draw attention to the eyes, giving the viewer of Sam, the viewer an idea of Sam Weir as a person. It's not clear if Sam expressed any reservations about the portrait to the artist, but Fred Varley seems to suggest some discussion has taken place. In a letter dated 1951, he writes, Dear Sam, I am glad the about 70 miles an hour got you safely back to London in time for your appointment. My drawing of you is complete and was awaiting you and now will await until you come again, unless you tell me to post it to you. I believe the more you see of it, the more like you it will become. I could depict you again, rugged in powerful light and shade if I were painting. Who knows? One photograph, one drawing is only a part of you. Rembrandt painted himself a score times and they were all different. It depends on mood and light and shade and who looks at you. And the artist tries to get a composite of the many changes. Your cousins and your aunts and your dearly beloveds see through their eyes. And the artist, the impersonal son of a gun, looks at form plus his reactions to the forms and his sympathies towards the sitter. So where are we? Thank you for the check. I will await news from you. Yours cordially, Fred. So here we have an expression of the artist's thoughts on portraiture and his working practice and reflections on how each subject changes depending on the viewer. Frederick Horsman Varley was a founding member of the Group of Seven, known for his accomplished portraits and landscapes. He was born in Sheffield, England in 1881. He studied art at the Sheffield School of Art and completed additional studies at the Académie Royale des Beaux-Arts in Antwerp, Belgium. 
encouraged by childhood friend Arthur Lismer, another member of the Group of Seven, Farley immigrated to Canada in 1912, bringing his wife and two children. And he found work at Grip Limited in Toronto. While working in commercial design, he became acquainted with future members of the Group of Seven and Tom Thompson, and accompanied members of the fledgling group on sketching trips through the near north. In 1917 and 18, Farley traveled to England and France as a war artist and later taught at the Vancouver School of, Impl of Applied and Decorative Arts. His later years were spent in the Toronto area where he died in 1969. The portrait of Sam Weir was the first work by the artist acquired by Sam. The two additional paintings in the collection, Plowed Fields Dune from 1948 and Arctic Landscape from a decade earlier, were added to the collection in the mid 1950s. Weir was interested in acquiring another portrait by the talented artist. In correspondence with Varley's son, Peter, Sam specified that he did not want, quote, a commissioned portrait. I mean a portrait that was painted by the artist to please himself, end quote. In the end, nothing came of this search prior to Varley's death in 1969. Sam's interest in acquiring another portrait by Varley may be related to his interest in portraiture as a genre. Sam was a supporter of the National Portrait Gallery, founded in 1939 with a donation from the estate of artist John Wycliffe Lowe's Forster. Weir joined the corporation and maintained an interest in, for several years until it was dissolved and the work transferred to the Royal Ontario Museum after the war. Various attempts have been made to establish a National Portrait Gallery for Canada, including developing the site of the former U.S. Embassy in Ottawa in the early 2000s, and more recently it was suggested as a sesquicentennial project in 2017. A new proposal for a public-private initiative is currently in the discussion stages in Ottawa. Since the 1930s, our ideas about portraiture have broadened considerably. Where once Sam Weir and his contemporaries envisioned a collection of portraits of prominent Canadians, of statesmen and business leaders and important citizens, the most recent initiative is tentatively known as the Gallery of Canadian Identity. The intent is to forge an expanded and inclusive idea of Canada a place to tell the stories of ordinary Canadians alongside those of more prominent individuals, and to tell those stories in different media and using different forms. The answer to the question posed by Fred Barley in his letter, this is where we are. Thank you for watching this birthday tribute to Sam Weir and look for our next presentation of Weir Wednesday on August 26th.